Welcome, welcome to Minzo Pass eh, and Biko Mountain. So this is the first video for Minzo Pass. This is the first um, lesson for Minzo Pass. So I'm pretty sure some of you are wondering what is Minzo Pass? <laughs> well, let me just start off by saying Minzo Pass is an exam prep provider, um, an exam prep provider, well, to be more specific for life and health insurance exam. So unlike all of our competitors, Kaplan, Excel Solutions, um, AD Banker, you, no, you, you need an exam FX. We only focus on one thing and one thing only, that is life and health insurance exam preparation. That is it. We don't do anything. We don't do property and casualty. We don't do securities. We don't do anything else. What that means for you is that now we are using everything we got and we're focusing on one thing. We're zooming on one thing. And you know that we don't have our attentions divided um, you know, in a lot of other areas. It's just one thing. So you know when it comes to life and health insurance exam preparation, we are the expert. Now, here's the thing, guys. Uh, sometimes I tend to go on and on and on and on, and everything is over the map. So I'm going to share my PowerPoint presentation, and then that will help to keep me on track, OK? So let's go ahead. Let me share my screen. All right. So you can see my screen right here. OK. Let's go here and do, oh, don't tell me I don't remember. <laughs> All right, let's do to present more, present more. Uh, come on. All right, perfect. All right, so this is present mode. So as I said, I'd like to welcome you guys to Minzo Pass. We are a life and health insurance exam prep company. That is all we do, okay? Now, this is a brand new company. We just started this year. And let me give you a little background uh, about myself. So my name is Biko Mantin. I'm a pharmacist by profession, <laughs> but um, I, I got into the financial industry to be more specific, the insurance industry, few months after I got out of school because my passion has really been about um, just business and finance and to be more specific, personal finance. That is what I'm very passionate about. So, Back when I got out of pharmacy school, this was a long time ago. <laughs> I was still in my 20s back then. I went ahead and I got my life and health insurance exam um, uh, license. And I also even got my securities license. So the thing with me is, and I'm sure a lot of you will be able to identify with this, is that I'm very, I'm very, uh, I'm almost like a perfectionist when it comes to preparing for exams. So I remember all the exams I've taken, whether it was the PCAT, for, for those of you who took a PCAT, it's the exam all high school students in America take uh, <laughs> before going to, uh, to college. So PCAT, whether it was um, you know, my, uh, you know, my pharmacy entrance exam, whether it's my board exam, Whatever, I've, I've taken a lot of public exams over the course of my life. And what I found out is I spent so much time studying. You know, I, I used to spend so much time sometimes, for example, <laughs> for, my, uh, for my life and health insurance exam when I, when I took it way back then. I spent almost six weeks studying, guys, six weeks, because I wanted to get everything right. I wanted to make sure I understood every single chapter, every single topic, every single word. I must have really understood maybe 95% of it before I could move forward. And 
Yes, I still pass. I've never failed any public exam in my life. <laughs> it's not so much that I'm so smart, no, but I just spend a lot of time. But think about it. How many of you have six weeks to spend studying for your life insurance exam? No, a lot of you are busy. You have, you have kids, you're working, you're probably going to school. You don't even have you know, that much time. So now you got to take one month, six weeks to prepare for your exam. That is one of the main reasons a lot of people don't pass their exam because they procrastinate, they don't have the time. They say, oh, you know, I don't have time. I don't have time right now. And I was just like you. I took so much time trying to understand and be an expert, but you have to understand that the exam, your goal should not be to become an expert. Your goal should be just to pass. Let me repeat. Your goal for the life insurance exam is not to become an expert, is to just pass. What that means is you have to change your strategy when it comes to uh, just starting to pass. And that was the mistake I made for a very long time, but I just learned the hard way because it got to a point I said, well, why am I spending six weeks? I have to take time off from work to, you know, to study. I'm spending you know, sometimes one month, six weeks. And it's not just me. A lot of students spend weeks, three, four weeks, one month, six weeks, study for just the life insurance exam. What if we could show you a better way to study for your exam, where instead of spending six weeks, you could spend six days or you could spend three days and still pass your exam. That was something I learned the hard way. I was just like you. <laughs> I wanted to understand everything so well and I'll take so much time preparing until I, I started to find out some of my friends who were not any smarter than me, I'm spending like for the life insurance, life and health insurance exam when I took it, I had people who studied and passed it in four days and I took five weeks to study for it. And I'm like, hold up, that guy is not any smarter than me. Why is he? taking five days to study. How did he take five days? And I'm here spending four or five weeks to study just to pass it because they use a different method. And that's what we're going to show you here. Welcome to the Menzo Pass Life Insurance Exam Preparation Part 1 video. But this one to be more specific, this is for the state of Washington, D.C. Now, this doesn't mean that if you are in another state, you will not benefit about 50 to 60 percent of the material here in this webinar will apply to all 50 states okay so whether you're in dc or you're in california you're going to benefit but this is custom made this is tailored specifically for the washington dc life insurance exam and that's what this is about so if you're not from washington uh, from washington dc or if you're not taking the Washington DC exam, there's no need to panic. You still learn a lot from this. So that was my experience. So I started to find out, you know, and I started to research better ways to study, not spend so much time and to be able to pass. And hence, Menzo pass. So when I did my research, I found out that the most effective way to study for any public exam is to spend 80% of your time doing practice questions and 20% of your time studying, okay? So no more than 20% of your active study time should be spent studying. That means you, you, you have a book, you're flipping pages, you're reading. No more than 20% of your study time should be spent doing that. that is secret number one. 80% of your time should be spent doing questions, 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 because doing questions is the easiest way to learn, to prepare for the exam. It's the most um, um, time efficient way and it's the, uh, it's the easiest way. 
Okay, so, so that was the first thing I learned. Then the second thing I learned was something called active recall. Maybe saying, what is active recall? Well, active recall is just, you're forcing your brain to recall information. When you do that, you remember a lot more and you remember for a longer period of time. Instead of just reading a book, what we usually do in, in college or in school, we, we take a book, we'll read it two, three times, we'll highlight, write in the margins, we read, 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 falling asleep. Then at the end of it, if we have time, then we then we try to do some, some practice test. Yeah, I'm telling you something different. It has worked for me and it has worked for a lot of people I've helped. And that's why I decided to come on YouTube. That's why I decided to create means of pass so I can bring this to the broader audience. I can bring this to everyone in all 50 states because I've helped a lot of people. I've cut down the study time for, for a lot of people from two weeks or three weeks to just a matter of days. What really inspired me to say, okay, enough is enough. I think it's about time to share this with a lot of people is that one of my students, and, and these were these were people I just helped one-on-one. -on -one. one of them using this strategy, he passed his Maryland insurance exam in two and a half days, two and a half days, less than 72 hours, okay? He, he studied Thursday, Friday, studied Saturday morning, went and took his exam Saturday afternoon and passed with flying colors. The other story, I had, you know, I know other people who just like me in the past, who spent weeks studying and still went and failed. 40% of people will fill their life insurance exam the first time, okay? So 40% of people will fill their life insurance exam the first time. That is the fact. And you don't want to be one of those 40. So what if I were to tell you that you can be part of the 60% that passed their exam the first time, spend less time studying, and also save yourself a lot of money doing it. That is what we are doing. So before I begin, guys, I tell people you have to know your why. Why do you want to get into insurance? Why do you want to become an insurance agent? Or why do you want to become a financial professional? Is it because of the money? And, and trust me, there's a lot of uh, money to be made in the insurance business. Or is it that you're passionate about it? Or is it both? What I would tell you right now, okay? And, and I'm sure some of you are telling yourself, oh my God, just get to the topic. You're listening to this on YouTube or maybe you're listening to this on the podcast right now. You're like, oh my God, this guy is just going on and on and on and on and on. Let me take a little break here. I, I find it very interesting that people are always in a rush. People are always in a hurry to nowhere. <laughs> I mean, think about it, right? Now we have fast food. No, no. We have ready, um, no, we have meals on the go, fast food. We have food, you can just go to the grocery store, put in a microwave and boom. Within five minutes, you have a meal waiting. We even have express checkout lanes in the grocery store. We have express checkout lanes at the airports. We have <laughs> we have um, uh, express lanes on the highway. Okay, um, HOV lanes. So, so our whole lives right now, everything is meant to go, 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 go. But yet it's still, we have no time. <laughs> so, so, so everything is faster now and people have such a short attention span. Someone was telling me that, hey, if you're doing a YouTube video, you shouldn't talk too much. Just within the first 30 seconds, just get to the point. Like, or if you don't, people will, uh, people will move on to the next video. Okay, well, <laughs> if you want to move on to the next video, that is fine. Or you can yeah, make use of the, uh, fast forward button. But 
I just think it's important to slow down and really understand your why. Why are you getting into this? Because here's the thing, there are a lot of ways to make money. There are thousands of ways to make money in America. I mean, when I mean thousands, you have thousands of ways to make money. I don't want you to just get into insurance, into the insurance business or the insurance industry just because you can make money. If you hate insurance, which a lot of people do, if you hate selling insurance, which a lot of people do, do yourself a favor and stop right now. Go and do something that you have passion for. Go and do something that you love because you know what? The insurance industry, while it is true, it has a lot of money, but it also has a lot of setbacks. There are a lot of roadblocks. There are a lot of people who will tell you no. There are a lot of people who will look down upon you because they are quote unquote selling insurance or an insurance agent. You are going to come across or you're going to experience a lot of failure. And if you, you are not passionate about this, if you don't love what you do, you are going to fail before you even start. Let me repeat that. If you don't love insurance or the financial industry and you're just doing it for the money, trust me, mark my word, you're going to fail before you even start. Because when the going gets tough, the only thing that will keep you pushing forward is your passion. And are you passionate about this? So if you're not passionate about insurance, again, I'm begging you. If you're not passionate about the financial industry, I'm begging you, do yourself a favor and go and do something out there that you are passionate about, something that you love. There are thousands of ways to make money. I'm pretty sure there's one out of those thousands that you like, that you're passionate about. Follow your passion first and money will come later, okay? Follow your passion first and money will come later. But if you put money before your love or your passion, most of the time you end up with none. So you end up with no money and you end up being miserable. This is why the insurance industry, from my experience, I've been in this for about 10 years or slightly over 10 years. I have a big team. I have about 75 people on my team and there's a high turnover rate in the insurance industry, especially if you, if you go the marketing route. There's a high turnover rate. About, I'll say about 85 to 80% of people who come on board quit within the first six months. They quit. 85% of people who come on board quit within the first six months because this is hard. It's not easy. It's not physical difficulty. It's not like you're doing um, construction work, but it's a lot of psychological and emotional difficulty. You have to be mentally strong. You have to be psychologically strong. You have to know what you really want. If not, I tell you, my friend, you'll be just like the other 85% that within six months, you're going to say, oh, this thing is so hard. There is no money here and you're going to quit. But don't you know the same insurance industry, you have people who start their own insurance business, their own financial services agency for less than $500 who within two, three to five years are earning 250 some even up to a million, two million dollars annual income. But that, that accounts to only roughly about two to 5%. Okay, so please, I can't say this enough and I'm gonna keep repeating myself. I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but if you don't like selling insurance, do not get into it. Don't waste your time trying to study for this exam. Click off this video right now and go and find something to do that you're passionate about because I can show you that there is a 99% chance that if you're doing it for just the money, you're going to fail and you're going to quit and it's going to be a waste of your time. Okay, so that is just to get it out of the way. So you have to know your why. For me, my why, I've always been passionate about business and finance to be more specific personal finance from the very, from a very young age. 
And even though I went to pharmacy school, I became a pharmacist, but I still could not resist that urge to follow my dreams, to follow my passion. And you're going to find out for, for those of you who decide to go forward in the insurance industry, who decide to become life insurance agents or health insurance agents, you're going to find out that there's a lot of stereotypes, a lot of negativity. You're going to get it from your family members. You're going to get it from your friends. You're going to get it from people you care about, people you love. They're going to look down on you. People will say, oh, that's a waste of your time. It's scam. This is beneath you. When I got in the insurance industry, first time when I just out of school, young pharmacists making six figures and people were looking at me, my friends and family were like, Biko, are you, are you crazy? What is wrong with you? You are earning good money. You are pharmacist for heaven's sake. You have a doctorate degree in pharmacy. Why are you doing this scam, this insurance thing? This is beneath you, right? A lot of people said it. People thought I was going crazy. Why would a pharmacist want to be an insurance agent? And because of that, my relationship got strained with some family members, some friends, because people could not understand. And when you go and try to get these people to protect themselves, they'll look at you as if you have two horns on your head. And you have people who will block your um, number, people who will stop returning your calls because they don't want to be bothered. They don't want to get insurance. So you're going to find a lot of personal setback, a lot of rejection, a lot of no's. And the only way you're going to be able to succeed, to keep pushing forward, is if you're passionate about this, if you love. And that is it. I love insurance. I think it's one of the best things, one of the best financial vehicles out there. Uh, I mean, I could go on for five, 10 hours just talking about the benefits of insurance. And I think everybody should have at a minimum of life insurance, okay? So I just wanna lay it out there for you. So now, again, you shouldn't worry about the time. This is a long series. We have at least about six, seven hours to go. I'm gonna cover a lot. I'm gonna take you from the beginning. I'm gonna hold your hands and we're gonna go through everything question by question with explanation. So you have a lot to learn. Trust me, don't be impatient. <laughs> don't be in a hurry to nowhere. We will get there. But again, if you think this is a um, waste of your time, you can fast forward. So now let's come here to the benefits of insurance industry or the benefits of the financial industry. So, so contrary to what a lot of people think, they think, oh, you're just an insurance agent, insurance agents don't make money, blah, blah, blah. Well, it depends what route you decide to go. You have three options. Option number one, you can be an employee. So that means you work for an insurance um, agency or an insurance company, like you work for State Farm, or State, all of that, and you're, you're paid a salary. So for that, yeah, you make you earn slightly above the average non, um, national income, which is, uh, for example, if you're in Washington, D.C., the average salary for life insurance agents, I think it's about $77,000 a year. Okay, so, so you can, you can go that route, you can become an employee, but the problem with being an employee is your income is capped, your income is fixed. Let's say as an insurance agent, as an employee, just coming out of the gate, the maximum you're going to make, depending on what state you live in, will probably be about $80,000 with no insurance, okay, about the maximum, okay, but the thing is, as an employee, employees are overworked, underpaid, and overtaxed. And your income is dependent on time. So if you don't go to work, you don't get paid. What if you can't work for one or two years, your income stops? The next option is self-employed. So you can become self-employed. That one is a little better. You make a little bit more money, but your income is still dependent on time. You're still exchanging your time for money. 
The third option, which I want you to consider, and I'm going to talk more about that in part two or part three. Again, this is part one. We have about six to eight hours of training videos. Again, don't be in a hurry. But if you must be in a hurry, you can skip forward. Please don't rush me. <laughs> but as as uh, if you own your own insurance agency, which is possible, if you own your own insurance industry, uh, agency, you're a business owner, and if you go the business route, then you now can make hundreds of thousands of dollars every year, even millions of dollars, depending on how you, you know, go about building your business. So when people say insurance agents don't make money, they're looking more for the from the employee side. And even for that, I mean, we make decent money, like average for, you know, right out of the gate, 75,000 with no experience, that's not bad, okay? But the business route is where the money is. And that's something I urge you to highly consider going the business route. If you want more information about that, again, there's a link in the description here for those of you watching on YouTube, there's a link in the description. If you're if you're watching, you no, know, if you're listening to this on a podcast, check out the description. You're gonna have the um, survey web address. You can copy and paste that into your browser, or you can type that into your browser. But go and fill that. I think it's a seven or eight question survey. Your name, your email address, what state, all of that, and we can send you more information because we're trying to create a course insurance course, custom made for each state. The problem with a lot of insurance providers, not insurance education providers is they, they have this one size fit all where, where you have one material for all the 50 states and then with the um, state law supplement. Here is different. All of our practice questions, all of our courses are customized to fit your state's exam outline because your exam questions will be uh, June based on your state's exam outline. So what are the benefits of the financial industry? Again, the financial industry is the largest industry in the world and even in America, it's the largest industry. It's, it's larger than the next two biggest industries combined. Uh, it's bigger than the healthcare and retail industry combined, okay? The financial industry is the industry that allows you to earn money, big money, the easiest way. Anytime money changes hands in the financial industry, someone gets paid. When you roll over your 401k, someone, uh, someone, is, someone is getting paid. When you get life insurance, someone is getting paid. When you open a bank account, someone is getting paid. Okay, so in the financial industry, anytime money changes hands, someone gets paid. Would you rather be that person? So if you decided that this is what you love, this is what you're passionate about, then I just want to let you know the financial industry is the way to go. Now, so some of you are listening to this and you're telling yourself, oh, well, I'm just an insurance agent. Yes, you have an insurance license. You have a life insurance license. But the work that you will be licensed to do is not just limited to life insurance. That is myth number one. So a lot of your friends and family who will try to, you know, try to dog you, or make fun of you, oh, you're an insurance agent, you know, that stuff like that. It's almost like an insult. Like people think in, um, being an insurance agent is for those who have no other options. <laughs> but there are a lot of people, I have medical doctors, surgeons, right? In my business, business partners, medical doctors, surgeons, who some of them quit their jobs to become insurance agents, to become professional, uh, no financial professional. That tells you everything you need to know. So when you get your life insurance license and Minso Pass will help you get your life insurance license, 
your life insurance license allows you to do more than just sell life insurance. For example, you can be able to do 401k, rovers, IRA, rovers. Think about all of the people you know, friends and family, who are quitting their jobs and you know, in between jobs. The, the average American spends no more than four years on one job. So the majority of the population changes um, jobs every four years. So when those people leave their jobs, they have 401ks there. And those four one kids need to be rolled over uh, somewhere else. Okay, so if you help people roll over their four one k, you make money. So four one k rovers, IRA rovers, those are things that, as a life insurance agent, you are licensed to do. The second thing you can do: fixed index annuities. Again, for some of you who don't know what fixed index annuities, I'll go into that later in the course, but you can do fixed index annuities. You can do, of course, life insurance. You can set up college savings plans. Your license allows you to do college savings plan. You can do executive bonus plans for businesses. Okay, executive bonus plan for businesses where businesses can be able to, you know, business owners can be able to use the company's uh, you know, revenue, the, you know, they can have the company pay them, pay for their retirement. And the company gets to deduct that money that is being paid, right, on your taxes there by lowering their, you know, their, their tax burden. But when the employee, which most of the time is the business owner. When you go to take that money out, you take that money, principal and growth, out tax-free. So you can do executive bonus plan if it's structured using an IUL, okay? And we'll talk more about that. You can, you can set up key person insurance for businesses. You can set up um, um, buy-sell agreements for businesses. You can do wills and trust, okay? You can do family banks. Do you even know what a family bank is, okay? A family bank is just what the name says, is a bank, your own personal bank. You can, you can set up family bank for people. You can do higher education guidance referrals. You can do debt consolidation referrals. You can do funeral concierge plan referrals. You can do back tax support for people who owe the IRS a lot of money and need help. You can do back tax support referrals. You can do personal financial analysis and so many things. So when people say you're an insurance agent, no. Yes, you're, you're a licensed insurance agent, but that license makes you a financial professional. And you can do so many things with just a life insurance license. And I will tell you now, without a shadow of doubt, and I know this may be considered controversial, but if you have your life and health insurance license and you decide to go the business route, I'm not talking about being an employee or being self-employed. If you decide to go the business route, that license is more valuable than a pharmacist license, than a nurse license, than a medical doctor license. That license, depending on how you decide to go, could be worth millions of dollars. And to start that, including the cost of licensing, initial setup fee, everything would be less than 500. That's why when I tell people the financial industry is the richest industry, it's the industry to make the most money in the shortest period of time, the easiest way people scoff at me because, because they don't know. Again, if you want to know how to do that, contact me. Next thing, are you ready to pass your exam? You came to the right place. We will ensure that you pass your exam. So Minzo Pass is here to the rescue. Now, tips to help you pass your exam. Before you start studying, I want you to do one thing, which a lot of people don't do. 
The first thing you have to do is you have to review your state's exam outline. Everything is out there for you. By the way, let me show you guys, for you guys on YouTube, let me show you how you find out your state exam outline. Because now, where you have the state exam outline, that tells you uh, where the exam questions will be drawn from. You know, you know, it, it kind of gives you a percentage of the exam um, questions that come from each topic. So for example, if I know a topic I'm going to get maybe 25% of my exam will be on that topic. But let's say for dental insurance, for example, for, for dental insurance, again, if you are taking the health insurance exam, but for dental insurance, only one question comes on dental insurance. Some states don't even test um, on that, okay? But if you don't have your state exam outline, you're not going to know, and you're going to go studying dental insurance when there's zero percent chance it's going to come on your exam. So the first thing, first place you want to start is look at your state exam outline and then study based on that outline. And our course here at Mental Pass is based on your state's exam outline. Let me show you how to find your state exam outline and how your exam outline looks like. So let's come here and let's go to Google. Hey, when in doubt, <laughs> ask Google, right? So let's go to uh, google.com here. By the way, Google is my favorite teacher. So um, it's a yeah, look up. I'll just type in look up, uh, in this case is Washington, D.C., look up um, District of Columbia. Life insurance exam outline. Okay, so that brings me in here, you see, to, to Pearson View. By the way, Pearson View is the um, test administrator for the District of Columbia. So I'll click here and bam, you see right here, it says here exam content outlines. This is effective as of November 2nd, 2020. So this gives you everything. It tells you here for the general portion because your exam will be divided into a general portion and the state portion, okay? So the state portion will just be focus on state regulations. For example, if you are doing life insurance, will be the state regulations for life insurance. And then you have the general knowledge, which is um, something that will apply to all 50 states, okay? So this just tells you here, for example, it tells you for, for the District of Columbia, you, you're gonna have on your general portion, you're gonna have 50 squared um, questions plus 10 pretext questions. So what does the pretest question mean? The pretest question are questions that are not graded. Okay, uh, those are test questions. So usually before they can put any new um, question on the exam, they have to test it out. And you know, they usually if, if they got about 60 to 70% of people passing that question, then that question comes on the exam. But let's say if, if 90% of people are passing <laughs> those pre-test questions, then it tells the, the test administrators that that question is too easy, then that will not come on the exam. But on the other hand, if you got, let's say only 20% of people passing that question, then it also tells the test administrators that the question is too difficult, so it won't come on the exam. So they, so they use those pre-test questions to uh, you know, to see you know, if about sixty to seventy percent of people are passing, then you say, okay, uh, you no, know, we can go ahead and put this on the exam. So that's another thing, guys. And later on in the course, I'm going to share with you guys strategies for for taking your exam. You don't want to spend more than one minute on each question because the average time you have for each question is about one minute and twenty seconds. 
for example, the District of Columbia. So let's say if you spend three minutes on one question, you just fell behind because there's a good chance if that question is very difficult and you don't remember seeing it in your study material, there's a good chance that it's probably a pre-test question. So you're wasting your time trying to figure something out. You're spending two, three minutes, five minutes on one question that will not even count towards your score. So don't waste your time. Don't spend more than one minute on a single question. If you, by the one minute mark, if you still don't know it, guess the answer, mark it for review, and towards the end of your exam, if you have time, you can come back to it. But they have pre-test questions. So this tells you here for the, for the general um, um, knowledge portion, there are 50 questions plus 10 pre-test questions. Then it just gives you here the breakdown. It tells you like that for types of policies, you have 12 questions will come from type of policies, right? So you no, know, the different types of life insurance policies, you no, know, whole life, um, you no know, term insurance, all of that stuff. It tells you that. Then it tells you for policy riders, provisions, options, and exclusions. 18 of your about 90 or 95 questions will come from there. And you just go through here. So now, not just the exact topics, but it even gives you detailed breakdown, right? Detailed breakdown. Yeah, for example, for the um, laws, rules, and regulations for, for all insurance, that part is 20 questions on the exam will come from that. So if I know that, oh crap, 20 questions will come from somewhere versus eight questions. I'm gonna spend more time mastering the section or mastering um, the topic that 20 questions will come from versus mastering a question, um, mastering topics that only four questions will come from. This is how you use the exam outline to help you study, okay? So, so, so this, this gives you, you know, it gives you breakdown, it gives you detail, for example, on a general insurance, right? Uh, under the um, District um, of Columbia uh, rules, the, under the state exam section, it tells you, yeah, it tells you, oh, under general insurance definitions, they're gonna test domestic, foreign, alien. So if I'm studying, I know crap, I must know what is a domestic insurance company, I must know what is a foreign insurance company, I must know what is an alien insurance company because that is on the exam outline. I must know the difference between stock and mutual insurance companies. Now, uh, can I know what is Lloyd's of London, what is uh, Fraternal Benefit Society? Yes, if I have time, but I don't see that on my exam outline, but I know for a fact that stock and mutual companies is on my exam outline. Again, there are about six or seven different types of insurance um, companies out there. But I know out of the six or seven, I just have two listed here on my exam outline for uh, the District of Columbia. Whereas for other states, other states will have stock, um, mutual insurance company, fraternal benefit society, lawyers of London on the exam um, outline. But DC is telling you that they're only gonna test you on 